DC Nation, what is up? We're back with another video on Star Girl Season 2 and Sarah checking out episode 4 titled Summer School Part 4. Now, so far this season has been really awesome. Last episode with Thunderbolt, Shade, more teases of like Eclipso, like the story is getting very interesting. I'm excited to see where it goes in this episode. So now we get right into this. Your latest reaction to Star Girl starts now. Okay. Coach Morrison's coming in from Lincoln. The Big Ten. Sweetie, you were gonna crush it. You're gonna be great. <laughs> okay. I don't know. So, is this episode gonna be more about Artemis? Sweetie, I miss you too. Mom says she loves you. You tell your mother I love her. Hmm. All right, visit's over. Said I had 15 minutes. Yeah, well, how uh, flies in prison, huh? Ah. Uh, <laughs> oof. So. Yeah, I, I would tell her, like, oh, tell her. How do you know about Eclipso? How do you know about Eclipso? You first. Mm. <laughs> well, I don't know about him. Dr. Midnight's goggles warn that that Eclipso is here in Blue Valley. The goggles said that? How would mm. they know? The trouble alerts, I guess. Chuck would well, know, like... Uh, he is very powerful. He's the devil in the shadows. Mm. Evil, Court. Real evil imprisoned inside the Black Diamond. The one the Shade's looking for. Wait, wasn't Eclipso like the god of vengeance like before the Spectre? I, I thought that's how it is in the comics. Powers. Dude, I think Spectre and Eclipso like fight in the comics. Like, that would be so dope on this. Well, I don't think they'll do that. Starman said the diamond drove people to do uh, bad things to themselves and to others. Like the JSA stopped Eclipso? Uh, yeah, kind of, but. To, but the longer Eclipso's active, the more powerful he becomes. Mm -hmm. So, the Shade, who kicked our collective butts without lifting a single finger is looking for the black diamond yeah to team up with pure evil mm -hmm. to do what i don't know where are you going please mm. do not clip so this girl so take control of her like if he's already getting in her head like that mm-hmm Her own ISA. Wait. Yeah. Hmm. No problem. Um, I I just wanted to say I'm really sorry for the situation that you're in. I can't imagine how tough that must be. What situation? Oh, um, you know, the 
situation that you, or, um, your parents, um, them being in prison, my parents, uh, prison. they shouldn't even be there. No, they aren't. Everyone's mocking us now. Mm -mm. Crocs don't forgive. And we don't forget. Whoa. How is he? Okay. How you just, like, destroy an apple like that? Like, anger issues. Anger issues? She got superpowers or a super strength or something. Like, it's one thing to be strong, but to just, like, crush an apple like that? No. Nah. Well, Mr. Tyler, it seems as if you've done it again. Another perfect score. I told you. I studied. Hmm. Um, Mr. Tyler. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I doubted you. It's just what everyone does. Hmm. It's okay. That's deep. Fight. Hey there, Pat. Oh shit. Dude, that's right. They fight each other last I think it was the season finale, right? Crusher, what are you doing here? Oh what well, well, man. We how how she flew down? Mm-hmm. Break out of prison? And you come straight back to your hometown? We left a decoy trail of breadcrumbs obvious enough for even the stupid cops to follow. <laughs> they should be halfway to Miami by now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bud. We didn't come back to town for revenge on you and the Scooby mm. gang. So what do you want? Our daughter has yeah. to us today. We can't miss that. Huh? Can't, can we, babe? Mm -mm. Here's the deal. You help us lay low until tryouts this afternoon, and we'll break back into prison afterwards. Without incident. Break back into prison? On the field. Dude, imagine that on a newspaper. Criminals break back into prison. Like what? Wrench if you want. Heck, I'll even give you a head start over to strike. And we could do this the old fashioned way. Or we could be friends. Buds. <laughs> I mean you wouldn't want the world to know about your little robot, would you? Mm-mm. I guess you're unpopular with a lot of people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the what? It's just a movie. Cell's a little small. Jim's great. I got visitation mm. rights with the missus. Oh, so you okay. can't any of your old ISA colleagues, any of the, any of the gang? Who's left? That putz, the gambler? Listen. Truthfully, pal, ISA, me and the wife, we never really fit in. I mean, Jordan was a good guy, mm -hmm. a few colors short of a rainbow, but the rest of them I do not miss. So, okay. not even the gang, huh? Not even the shade? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would seen that tea-sucking scone gobbler in years. I never mm -hmm. liked him either. He was not a team player. No, he He's back. Guys, he would, he's Dude, I want to see them go against the shade. What do you call them? The scarves? Ascots. They're called ascots. Ascots. <laughs> ascots. Hey, you want to know about bad, bad guys? I got to tell you what the dragon king did to the wizard's body. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, okay. I like this. I always felt like we were around the world to becoming good friends, but what happened? I mean, I kind of felt that way myself. I think the fact that you tried to kill me, that might be a <laughs> damper on the friendship. But who knows? Yeah, 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 I get through with that. Fair point. Can I get you something? Do you um, drink coffee? Caffeine? No, thank you. Uh, water? What kind? You let your children eat processed foods? They're teenagers. If Mike wants to eat those things, he's gonna find a way to get them. You know, it's kind of like Courtney. 
when she makes up her mind about something, there is just no stopping her. <laughs> Artemis is like that too. Unstoppable. Yeah, it doesn't matter what mm. you say. <laughs> She's not gonna listen. And I like Oh, are they about to bond about their children? Oh. <laughs> Dude, this is actually cool. Oh, nice catch. Thanks. Maybe I'll try some. Mm -hmm. You got it? Yeah, I think so. Thanks, Maria. You're doing great. Okay, guys. Look at you. There were two warring tribes living on different sides of the island. One okay. Summoned an evil entity of vengeance, trapping mm -hmm. it in what sounds like the Black Diamond. Mm, yeah. How did the Black Diamond end up here? An explorer named Bruce Gordon rediscovered Diablo Island. Bruce Gordon? Dude, that's exactly from the comics. Because the whole thing was that um, the writer, I think, was trying to make a homage to, like, okay, Commissioner Gordon and Bruce Wayne, like, combine their names, Bruce Gordon, and there's some kind of, like, scientist that, like, got, like, a, I think it was a diamond, and then there was, like, an eclipse that came at the same time, he became Eclipso. It was kind of a ridiculous or origin, but still cool. To see if I can find anything else. I'll keep trying to get Chuck back online. Maybe he can help us open the files on Eclipso. I've got to feed the dog. Can I get a dozen cheeseburgers to go and some fries? Are you serious? Hey, what a dozen cheeseburgers? Okay. <laughs> so, what kind of dog did you get? Yeah. Um, what is that monster? Well, me, it's not a monster, but what is the thing that Rick has been like following or going to every day? That's a better way to phrase it. What is this place? Mm. This is where your parents and mine tried to save the world until the JSA killed them. Dead? He was called the Fiddler. The Fiddler? Mm. Thanks. Okay. That guy was a little creepy. Oh. I'm not gonna lie. Uh oh. I know who you are. And I know what you're Shade. Mm. You want the black diamond so you can team up with Eclipso to do No. I, I don't think he wants to team up, honestly. Super villain team up. The vast scope of your imagination. It happens. Icicle and Brainwave. I'll ignore the insult of comparing me to those two incompetents. By far the greatest slight oh. is assuming I seek to conspire with Eclipso. Why wouldn't you? You're just as bad as he is. You killed mm, Dr. No. I, and said with such conviction, you were there, I assume. Pat was. Oh, yes, of course. Dear old Stripesy. Eclipso, on the other hand. He killed McNider's daughter. Oh. She was ten years old. That was the daughter at the wait. Was that the daughter at the Could beginning of the season about? premiere? Mm. No, or but no? A moment ago, you were so sure of everything. When I find the black diamond, I intend to throw it in the deepest, darkest part of the ocean, so that Eclipso may never hurt anyone ever again. Okay. Dude, that reminds me of like. 
I think it was Injustice Year Zero where Alan Scott tried to uh, put like the black diamonds at the bottom of the ocean. But then Joker found it, and that that was a whole cool story. But but really, leave this all to me. Mm. Leave it alone, Courtney. Go on mess with shade. Do this. Dust yourself off. Artemis! Artemis! We made it! We made it! There you go. Dude, she's about to crush it. Let's go. Dude, how is that ball going? Okay, I, I guess, yeah. She's gotta have superpowers, like, nice. Like, I know those people are that good at football. Well, I don't know that good, like. <laughs> that is nice, though. That's nice. Oh, Sydney, are you really gonna ruin this? Well, no, she's just trying to recruit her. Yeah, I'll leave Sydney. Artemis Croc will be yours mm. to use. Whoa, whoa, what the heck? Man, don't mess her up. messed up like Artemis was doing fine and of course then yes the mess us up from, <laughs> man <laughs> I don't like Sydney <laughs> I was feeling so good about Artemis and damn Tell me before. Well, mm. I'm going to, but. But you have your own dreams. Yeah. I mean, you're going to be the first female quarterback in the history of college football. My girl is. <laughs> the only reason I did so well today was because you guys were here. No. Mm -hmm. The reason that you crushed it today is because of you. You've got a future now. We're not going to let anything get in the way of that. Including us. 
Mm. This has to be goodbye. Ah. Man, these are some like, I gotta say, Sportsmaster, Tigress, and Artemis, some of the best characters in the show. They only show up once in a while, but when they do show up, they're pretty good. Oh, it's Chuck. 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 Oh. I can hear you. I can hear you. Who are you? It's me. Your best friend, Beth Chapel. Come on, Chuck. You know me. Why do you keep calling me Chuck? Mm. What's your name? You're Dr. Charles McNighter. His AI. AI? What are you talking about? Where's Cat? What happened to the jail? Oh. To find them. It's been lost for years. Wait, so what? Who is this? My name is Dr. Charles McNider. Oh. In the shadow. Wait. D wait, D he's in the Shadowlands? Dr. Charles McNider? So that that's where the that's what the shade does. He has like the Shadowlands. Hello? Dude, so you, you told me they're gonna go to the Shadowlands and try to rescue Dr. Midnight? Dr. Midnight is alive. Yeah, he is. Hello? Hello, Beth. Beth Chapel. Oh, cool, cool. Hello. 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 Oh, tell me that's not. Oh my goodness. Really? Okay. That's a good cliffhanger, though. Like, I like that. The fact that Dr. Midnight is still alive and he's in the Shadowlands. I thought they were just going to do, okay, Shade. He shows up. He acts like Shade. He's cool and all. But the fact that they're going to go into the Shadowlands, that gets me really hyped. But, yeah, guys, that was your reaction. Let's get to the review. And that was your latest reaction to Stargirl. And guys, this episode is very laid back. The big emphasis in this episode is Artemis, Sportsmaster, and Tigress. We see, you know, Sportsmaster and Tigress, they return. And I gotta say, seeing them back was awesome. Like, they were hilarious. They had a lot of great lines. And actually, the whole, like, sequence where we see Sportsmaster interact with Pats, and then Tigress interact with Barbara. Like, it's a very interesting dynamic. And to just see them come back just to see their daughter being like the, I, I forgot what, what was it, not the playoffs, but the starter up, you know, just play football. Like, it was really nice. And to see Artemis happy, like, we get a whole character arc for Artemis in this episode. She goes from, like, very unhappy, she can't do it, she's not motivated, to seeing her parents in the crowd, and she does it. And then we have Sydney to ruin it all. Like, Sydney shows up, makes... Artemis just go wild. Like, she starts beating up on Courtney. And, yeah, Sydney in this episode, I didn't like her. Like, okay, this is gonna sound bad, but if Eclipso has to kill one person in the show, make it Sydney. Like, the fact that, okay, how she addressed um, Isaac Bowen, Fiddler, that was fine. Like, he was alone already. So she showed up, she's like, hey, join me. That was good. But then we got Artemis. She's living a good life again. She sees her parents. She's about to do good in football. She's not being a villain. And then there's Sydney showing up, having the Black Diamond mess with Artemis, have Artemis lose that opportunity, and then now she's in the ISA. So, yeah. I, I kind of wish Artemis got to just live that good life. Like, it's tragic, but... Still, good storytelling. I'm looking forward to see where this whole ISA, this new ISA storyline goes. Now, to other things in this episode, we have Rick. He is still dealing with these things, people doubting him, and we still don't know what that monster he's feeding. Like, I'm very curious to find out about that. We'll probably find out about that in, like, two episodes, maybe? I hope, because they've been, like, delaying that. Now, we also got Beth. Actually, we're going to save Beth's story for later, right? Because that's the big cliffhanger. But to other things, we have more teases of Eclipso. We learned about, like, Bruce Gordon. Like, we actually get some hints of his origin in this episode, which I liked. And, guys, 
the biggest things I like about Calypso is, okay, he's pure evil, he's, you know, heart of darkness, and he was the god of vengeance before the Spectre. Spectre came after him because Calypso was banned from heaven. Like, that's very interesting. And actually, in the comics, we see Calypso, he interacts with Darkseid in, like, a game of chess. We have Calypso versus Spectre in, like, a big clash, like, a big battle. I know we won't get that in this series, like... Spectre, well, Oliver Queen is Spectre in the Airverse, so that ain't gonna happen. Like, Oliver is not gonna show up as a Spectre and start fighting against Eclipso. I know that sounds super cool, but it ain't gonna happen. But yeah, more teases of Eclipso in this episode, and it just keeps giving me, like, more hypes. Like, once Eclipso actually shows up, it is gonna be so cool. Like, that is gonna be a really awesome sequence, and he's gonna be a really cool villain. Now, let's get to Beth, alright? Beth. At the end of the episode, she gets Chuck, well, it ain't Chuck, actually, it's Dr. Midnight, and we find out he's actually stranded or lost in the Shadowlands. Now, if you don't know the Shadowlands, it's basically our, we got the shade, right? Well, all his shadows come from the Shadowland. Like, that's just a whole realm filled with shadows and, like, kind of like your greatest fears in a way. I didn't think they would go there, but the fact that they're going there with the Shadowlands and now Dr. Midnight stuck there, like, it's another cool subplot that is going to make this season even better. Like, there's so many things going on in this show that there's never a point that I lose interest. Like, I'm never bored at all. There's always intriguing things happening and things that keep you, like, paying attention. And this cliffhanger, even though it's not, like, huge, like, it's not, like, a big cliffhanger. Oh, Dr. Midnight's alive. He's in the Shadowlands. It's more like, wow, there's so many cool, like, potential for storytelling with this. Like, they could go to the Shadowlands, fight, like, evil counterparts. Like, they could do so much with this cliffhanger that I'm excited to see what they do with it. Like, it gives me more hype. But yeah, guys, enough of me, like, praising this show. It's just a great show. I'm gonna give this episode an 8.3 out of 10. Like I said earlier, this episode isn't, like, the best of the season. It's more, like, laid back and a little slow. But that doesn't mean you should skip out on it. Like, there's still a lot of good things in this episode. But yeah, guys... Tell me your thoughts and stuff. So down below, what'd you think about it? What'd you think about that cliffhanger with Dr. Midnight in the Shadowlands? And yeah, if you like the video, give a big thumbs up to your channel. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next Stargirl reaction and review. And yeah, thanks for watching and peace out.